Bangladesh did something that will, well, bring their nation pure joy. They sent kids to New Zealand expecting nothing at all. And these young men found unexpected light from what was supposed to be utter darkness. I've always thought that the best hugs come from the most unexpected places. And I'm not sure this could have been much more surprising. It was like expecting a beating only for the person to give you a warm embrace and then slip 20 bucks in your pocket. This is the last knock. My dad told me to say this. Bangladesh beating New Zealand could be the biggest upset in test cricket history. You will hear that from a lot of people because recency bias is a wonderful thing, but they might actually be right in this case. There really haven't been that many great upsets in tests. The game is actually set up so that the better team wins a higher percentage of time compared to other sports. And we just stopped letting new teams in, so we stopped a lot of upsets. Ireland and Fiji have both beaten the West Indies outside of test matches, and Ceylon defeated India. But they're all unofficial. In white ball cricket, it's obviously a lot different. In ODIs and T20s, we've had Kenya's great wins, Ireland over Pakistan, Zimbabwe over Australia, Zimbabwe over England, and the Netherlands over England. There's been a lot of upsets in those formats of cricket. In tests, the list is a lot shorter. In recent times, Sri Lanka beating South Africa at home was a huge upset in 2019. But Sri Lanka were going up against a slipping South Africa, who were clearly not as good as New Zealand. And Sri Lanka had beaten Pakistan overseas in 2017 and England in 2014. It was still a proper upset, especially as they won the series. But they were still a struggling major nation beating another one. Zimbabwe beating Pakistan in 1995. Wow, I mean, that is amazing. But it does make a bit more sense when you look at the two teams. Zimbabwe had the Flowers, Campbell and Houghton all up against Wazim Akram and not that many other bowlers who actually took test wickets. Put it this way, Bangladesh didn't even have arguably their best batter in Tamin Iqbal. So it's not exactly like for like. Also, also Zimbabwe's win was at home in Harare. But it was Zimbabwe's first win, and certainly a fair contender for the biggest upset ever. New Zealand have had a couple of great ones, including beating Pakistan in 1969. But Pakistan were not a great side back then, even if it was on the road. And their second series win for New Zealand was against West Indies in 1979. Yeah, that West Indies. But it was also quite early on in their run, and I think it counts, but again, it was at home and with home umpires. Please see Michael Holding kicking down stumps. Plus, New Zealand did have Richard Hadley. Bangladesh's greatest ever player is Shaky Balasan, and he's not playing against New Zealand in this test. India defeating England in 1971 is undoubtedly a huge upset, but probably not even the biggest one at the Oval by an Asian team. India's other big win was against a solid Australian team in 1959 in Kampur. It was a big, big win, and it's worthy of note, but again, it was at home, even though they were massive underdogs. And the biggest upset at the Oval was Pakistan beating England in 1954. Pakistan did that on their second ever tour, but they had Fazal Mahmood, not Ebadot Hussain. Mahmood was already unplayable, and you had an outside chance of winning any test match with him in the team, a bit like you would for Murali or Hadley. Ebadot averaged 81 coming into the second innings. He's a military volleyball player, and in 11 tests, he's taken more than one wicket on two occasions. And it wasn't like he was the only unproven player, but this was a near work experience level team, even by Bangladesh standards. People are already saying that the lack of older players here helped, but that's a lot of talent to be back home watching this on TV. So that leaves us with just a bunch of weird South African matches. And we don't think of them as strugglers, but like Bangladesh, their early period of tests was incredibly tough. But as late as 1952, they were still a very poor team. So them winning two tests against a quality Australian side was certainly a huge upset. But it is hard to know how good they were at that point because, you know, they only played white teams. In 1935, they came to England and won a single test, which, weirdly enough, was enough to win that series. But they had beaten England at home, even if it was five years earlier. And to be honest, no one was really expecting them to win in 1935. A little bit of grass on the wicket is good, but too much and all hell breaks loose. Not enough and things can go sideways very quick. The same is true of your pubic hair. And you don't have a groundsman who smells like fertilizer telling you what to do. No, you are the curator of your own pubic pitch. So if you're having trouble grooming your pitch, what about Manscaped? They've invented a sleek, well-designed, optimized trimmer that helps you shave your ball. I've used it and it's incredible. It's good enough to use at Lord's. So get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code REDINCA. And you just put that in at manscaped.com. That's 20% off, free worldwide shipping, manscaped.com. The code is REDINCA. I always thought this podcast took balls more seriously than anyone else. Then I tried Manscaped. But 
But perhaps their biggest upset, and before today probably Test Cricket's biggest upset, was when South Africa beat England in 1905-06. At that point, South Africa had played 11 tests against incredibly poor England teams and a very tired Australian team right off the boat. All of them at home, and they'd still only had a single draw as their best result. It's hard to explain how bad early South African cricket was. And then, bang, wow, they beat England, and they do it 4-1. But again, it was at home, and it also wasn't against a full-strength England team. And I don't mean a couple of players were being rested. I mean a proper B slash C team. Now, New Zealand weren't at full strength here, but they were pretty close. And you would actually have to say that Bangladesh were weakened even more. And if you want to look at it statistically, I think Russell has that covered with some numbers here. But I've been chatting to a few historians and statisticians, and I'm obviously a combination of both. And anyway, you look at this win, it's near the top of the charts, if not, you know, number one. What Bangladesh has done here is remarkable. New Zealand won the World Test Championship, but obviously that was a flawed event with a one-off final. And New Zealand were also ranked number one, but the rankings are also flawed and they're no longer at the top. I would say that India is certainly a better all-surface team, and Australia might be superior to New Zealand as well. But New Zealand has the best performing batting lineup globally, and probably the best four-man seam group. Their only main weakness is a spinner, and I suppose occasionally playing in Australia, But at home, neither of those things are really a big factor. New Zealand has lost four of their last 43 matches at home. This is their first defeat in 17 tests. And in that time, their batters have averaged 42 runs and their bowlers 28. That means they are 14 runs better per wicket than their tourists. And look at who was traveling them. A team that had won five matches ever away from home before this. And two of those were against the fairly poor Zimbabwe teams. Another two were against the strike hit West Indies lineup. And their biggest overseas win was in 2017 against Sri Lanka in Colombo. That was a big win, but in conditions that did assist what they do best. They certainly helped Shakib Alassane, who took wickets and made runs in that test. That win against Sri Lanka and the two wins at home against Australia and England have to be their biggest wins before this. But this is enormous and more surprising than the other three. Partly just because of how good New Zealand has been and how poor Bangladesh has been. I mean, they lost a test to Pakistan at home when Pakistan's first innings finished just before tea on day four. They also let a bowling all around to make his debut for the West Indies anchor a chase of nearly 400. And they lost another test against the West Indies at home as well. Bangladesh had won two of their previous 14 tests. Not only were they supposed to lose, they were supposed to be crushed in incredibly short matches. They wouldn't be able to get through New Zealand's batting, but even if they did, they'd be bounced out by Wagner. And if somehow they survived him, Jameson would destroy them. There was nothing in their recent history, lineup, or their game that suggested this was going to be a contest, let alone a win. And it's not just recent form, is it? Bangladesh have struggled since they got to Test cricket, and even before that. Their rise was random and included many losses to teams like Denmark. But they do have a long and proud cricket tradition, which I covered on a recent Double Century podcast. But I want to focus on something else in Bangladesh's history. In 1969, when New Zealand won their first Test Series versus Pakistan, the final match was in Dhaka. Bangladesh wasn't even a nation then. And over 50 years later, Bangladesh have won their first major win away from Asia in New Zealand. There's something to that. And it's their biggest win. We can all argue over whether it's the biggest upset ever in Test cricket. And at a certain point, that doesn't really matter. What does is that Bangladesh just did something completely remarkable. And it might be their most surprising and biggest win ever. But right now for Bangladesh, I suppose it's the joy that matters. 